Hey friends. Hey, welcome back to our normally Tuesday, but today Wednesday, talk about five books we are loving this week. Um, I'm just going to wait for just a second to see if some friends will join us. Thank you for being flexible this week. We have had some weird sickness going around. Um, I had this random laryngitis thing happening and I had no voice yesterday. So I'm so glad to be on today um, to talk about the five books that I have going on for this week. Five books we are loving. And if you didn't join us last week, just a quick little recap. We are sharing every Tuesday at 4.30, except this week, uh, five books we are loving so that you can add them to your library pickup list or to your Amazon cart if you're building your at-home library or want to have some um, planned for later to buy for maybe a birthday or Christmas list. Um, so we're excited to be here. Thanks again for um, your patience and um, we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, before we start talking about books, um, since we've had kind of a crazy week around here, why don't you drop an emoji in the comments um, to describe the kind of mom week you're having. I need a little laughter um, happening this today. So pop an emoji. Oh, and Katie's in the comments too. Hey, Katie. Um, she's excited. I, I told her the five books that I'm going to share this week. So um, so if you can, drop an emoji to describe your week, and we're going to go ahead and get started because I've promised a short little uh, five book list. I'm going to take that out of the oven. So I'm going to keep it short and sweet and give you five books I'm loving this week. So the first one um, is such a cute one. Um, I will never not ever eat a tomato. And this author, um, Lauren Child, I think has some other books um, that have the same characters. We only have this one, so I definitely want to check them out since my kids are really into this book this week. Um, this is one we've had for a while that my kids pulled out again. Um, it is a darling story about a brother and a sister, Charlie and Lola. And Charlie has to look, look after Lola, who is a super picky eater. And so she lists all the things that she doesn't like to eat. And so he has to get creative and call certain things that she doesn't like to eat something else to kind of trick her a little bit into eating some foods and see if she likes them. So, for example, she says, I will never, not ever, ever eat a carrot. And he said, oh, these are not carrots. These are orange twiglets from Jupiter. And so, oh, Katie says she loves this one too. Um, so it's a super cute book, especially if you have picky eaters to kind of uh, excite them a little bit about trying some new foods. You could even try this trick on your kiddos. Um, it's a really cute one. It's on my five books for loving this week. Okay, I need all the unicorn loving daughters. Who has a daughter who is loving unicorns? Oh my goodness, I don't even know how my daughter even learned about a unicorn, but she's like crazy about unicorns. And I've heard that other from other moms that other girls are also crazy about unicorns. So I'm always a little bit leery. Um, they're not my favorite. But we found this on um, at the library this week, and it is really cute. And it's actually written by one of my favorite authors, and I know Katie loves her too, Amy Krauss Rosenthal. And actually, I think, yeah, I um, shared Little P last week, and she also wrote this book. And it is a darling story about a little unicorn, and um, she believes in little girls. And so all the other unicorns think she's so silly for believing in little girls. And then the story switches halfway through um, to You Need the Unicorn. I don't even think I told you the title. Sorry. You Need the Unicorn. Um, and it's about the little girl who believes in unicorns, that unicorns are real. It's a really cute story, and I think your daughter will really like this if your daughter is into unicorns. Um, so check this one out, You Need the Unicorn. Oh, I love this book, you guys. Please put this on your list this week. Um, From Tree to Sea. This is a new one um, that we had never read before. I think this is on, um, I found this this summer when we were creating our literacy um, monthly book lists. Um, and I read it then and my kids are loving it this week. It's so cute. And it talks about um, things on the earth and it compares things in on the earth to like a quality 
that they might have. So, um, for examples, an ocean talks about how um, it shows you how to travel far and wide and see all there is to see. Um, and stones, what stones tell you. Stones tell you how to be strong. Um, this is a super cute book. Um, and we actually, our family takes the opportunity to talk about God's creation and all there is um, to see in his creation and what he teaches us. So this is a really good one and it's so beautiful and my kids are really loving it this week. So check this one out from Tree to Sea. And then this one was a surprise to me. Um, I didn't know how cute it was going to be until I read it. Um, so we have the book Fletcher and the Falling Leaves and I saw this at the, on the library list when I was looking up some of our favorite authors. It popped up. This is called Fletcher and the Springtime Blossoms. And I think I like it even more than Fletcher and the Falling Leaves. Both are really, are really cute. Um, but this is a story about a little fox, and he, um, he, it's springtime, and so everything is happening, and he walks into the orchard, um, and he thinks it's snowing because there are blossoms everywhere, and he thinks it's snow, and he has to go and warn all of his animal friends that it is still winter, and he tells all of his friends all the things that they have to do to go back to winter state. So um, it also kind of incorporates some nonfiction. I love when authors do this. So for each animal, so for example, he, he has to go and tell Bear that he needs to go back to hibernating um, because it is not springtime yet. Um, and it talks about each animal and just a little tidbit, tidbit about what that animal does in the winter time or to get ready for winter. This is so cute, you guys. Your kids are gonna love this one. So check that one out if you haven't already. And then last but not least, I love this book. Um, this was uh, introduced to me by, by my sweet Aunt Lisa this year. Um, she actually read it to my kids. Um, well, not this year, I guess it was last year, 2020. Um, and she read it to us and my kids literally watched her read this like a thousand times, which is a good thing. Um, and it's called The Dark, Dark Night. Um, and this is a, I, I was a little nervous because it kind of sounds like a scary book and my kids are a little sensitive, but <clears throat> it is not scary at all. It's actually super darling. And it's about a frog who's ready to, um, <clears throat> he was so excited because winter was done and he, and he is ready. It's springtime and he's on his way back to his pond. And so he's ready to jump in and he has his lantern and then he looks up and he realizes there's a swamp monster. And as you can see, it's his shadow. Um, and so he runs back to his friends and he's like, there's a swamp monster. Um, and they don't believe him. And so he grabs another friend and they go back. And then Hedgehog comes and joins him. And they have their lanterns. And then the swamp monster looks even bigger. You can see he has terrible spikes. Um, and so each animal adds to the shadow, um, and Mouse is wanting to join his friends. And then in the end, uh, Mouse comes with his lantern, and his shadow is very small. And they realize it was so silly that it was just their shadow all along. So this is a super cute book, perfect for springtime. <laughs> Excuse me. And um, your kids are going to for sure love this one. So. I hope you have loved the five books we are loving this week. Um, I hope that they are helpful to you and you can add them to your library book list this week or this month um, or to your Amazon, Amazon cart. Um, and as always, please let us know in the comments if you have questions about particular books or if you want me to um, show a book or a kind of book that you're looking for, I'd be happy to do that too. So next week I will be there on Tuesday at 4.30. Um, be sure to join me and as always, happy reading!